If you've clicked on this video, you've likely seen our K-Swap series where I put a K24 into my Honda Civic. And if you saw that series, you probably saw at the end that I plan on competing in Grid Life Time Attack this year with that little car. Now the Grid Life Street Class is pretty limited on modifications that you can do, but one of the best mods that you can do is seat time, because increasing driver skills is one of the best ways to go faster. Which is why we're here at AIM Sports today. Data acquisition is one of the best tools that you can use to increase your driver skill, and AIM Sports is definitely on the cutting edge of data acquisition. They have an AIM Solo that you've likely seen in a lot of these cars in the videos that we've made in the past, and that's what you can use to monitor your track times. And that can help you learn uh, how to go faster through certain corners as a driver. But they also make digital dashes so you can monitor your engine vitals and make sure you don't blow up your engine like I've done twice in the past. There it is. I melted the forged piston. So that's why we're here today to install a digital dash into my little Honda Civic. You'll notice that my muffler is missing and I have grid life stickers all over the car. That's because at the time of filming this episode, I've actually already competed in my first grid life event. That will be released in a future video. You'll have to watch that video to find out how I lost my exhaust. Anyway, back to the digital dash install. Hi guys, I'm Brick. I'm a technician with AIM Sports, and today we're going to be installing an MXS 1.2 dash in Mia along with a couple of sensors and a custom harness. So it's really useful for drivers uh, just because they can, you know, they have certain things that are actively telling them if they're going faster or slower while they're on track. Um, they can also come back off the track and review their data, you know, to see, you know, I could have taken a better line here, I could have braked harder here, that kind of stuff. It is sort of similar to a video game in real life, uh, just because you're able to see your, you know, your split times, your predictive timing, all that kind of stuff live, uh, which is something that you would see a lot of times in, you know, Gran Turismo, Forza, something like that, that's displayed on the screen. I decided to remove the factory dash and put the digital dash in its place. Most people just mount the dash in front of the factory gauge cluster, but I wanted a cleaner look. That means that the dash will need to connect up to some additional signals that it wouldn't normally need to display, such as turn signals, check engine light, and fuel level, all of which are normally displayed on the factory gauge cluster. AIM doesn't typically do installs in-house, but because of all of this complexity, they've decided to help me out, and I'm very grateful. All right, hello everyone, my name is Cameron Bennett and I am a technician here at AIM Sports in Roanoke, Virginia. Today, or actually over the past few weeks, we built a custom harness for Mia, the uh, Honda Civic. And what we did is we are using the Deutsch AS612 connectors, 37 pin for the main, 22 pin for the auxiliary harness. And uh, we did a full mil-spec concentric twisted harness. Um, so this is a little bit of a demo harness that I made just so you can see the concentric twisting. And what that does is that gives that the, the harness that flexibility to be able to move around and you know, really be able to plumb it into the car where it needs to go. From a strength and durability standpoint with the mil-spec harnesses that we make, we do a service loop in here, which allows us to have a little more strain relief and also it's serviceability. So if there's an issue inside of this connector what, with a pin or you know, something happens, we can cut the boot off and we have a little bit of extra wire in there that we can work with, recrimp a pin or do something along those lines, you know, any serviceability that you need. So I am taking the can high and can low out of the Han data, separating it out, twisting it up like you should with can, and I'm going to heat shrink it up so it looks nice and protected, and then we will put a new connector on it. So connect up with a DTM style connector like we made up to our right here. ECU connector right here, so we'll have a nice connection. The digital dash connects to multiple data inputs on the car, the obvious one being the ECU. This comes from a CAN output signal from the Honda ECU. This will give the dash all of the information that the ECU has, like vehicle speed, RPM, coolant temp, and more. Then there are other sensor information that the dash needs that the ECU doesn't have. Things like the turn signals and fuel level all come directly from the body harness. So we are tapping into the gauge cluster connectors to grab the signal for high beam, left and right blinker, and fuel level. The dash is now grabbing all information that the ECU has, as well as taking some information from the body harness. Now that that's done, it's time to add some new sensors to the car to read information that I couldn't see before. Things like oil pressure, GPS speed and position, and even tire temperature. So with the Mia, we're adding on um, a couple of different sensors. 
um, with room to grow. We've sourced something from KA Manufacturing. KA Sensors, they do automotive specialized sensors as well as we do. Um, they have a, a, a two-in-one oil pressure and temperature sensor in one. Um, you're, you're measuring vehicle health and then you're monitoring driver as well. Um, this one is, is purely vehicle health with that sensor. The other sensors we've added in are uh, tire temperature sensors today and that relates, that's the core of everything suspension. Um, tire pressure and tire temperatures are two major things for every high level racer. Any kind of a suspension adjustment you're going to make is going to affect your tires. Your tires are also going to have a maximum effective grip and you want to get to that line and that is a way to help you measure it. So this is the tire temperature sensor. Um, it has like an infrared on the top there and then you can see these little holes on the side. Um, they're threaded for little tiny screws and you can run that through a plate that you make. Um, and obviously you've got your connection on the other end. And you can put that, um, basically I'm gonna put this maybe up you know, in the fender liner, uh, up behind the fender liner rather, uh, near, near the headlight probably. You wanna keep it some distance away so you can measure. I think it's a 35 degree angle um, is where it's gonna measure. So I wanna measure uh, over a wide range on the tire. You don't really wanna mount it behind the tire because then as the rubber flings off of the soft tires, it can hit that and you know, kick up rocks and stuff like that, which is not good for the sensor. So we'll probably put it up there. That way it doesn't get stuff flinging up on it. And um, yeah, I, got, I have to make brackets for it, which is a little bit unfortunate and that's gonna take some time, but it's gonna be worth it. Because I'm limited on time, I'm going to install these tire temperature sensors later. If you're interested in seeing how I mount them, follow our Instagram and I'll probably post a story there about it later. Brick, what are you doing with that drill there? Putting holes in your car. <laughs> Why are you putting holes in my car? For GPS reasons. Now, I know you're cringing as much as I am. I don't like the idea of drilling into my car either. But believe it or not, we're only enlarging a hole that was already there to fit the wire. No, so no. all the factory weather sealing should work. The GPS sensor itself is actually just magnetized to the roof. So Brick, what is the point of that uh, GPS sensor? Uh, well, there's a number of channels that you can get from it. Uh, I mean, GPS position is obviously one of them, but speeds and uh, accelerometers and stuff like that. Uh, there's also some calculated channels that we can do with GPS, so you actually get a lot more than just like you would from a Garmin. <laughs> <laughs> so that's gonna give me uh, for la like track lap data? You, yeah, lap times, split times, predictive lap times, all that good stuff. All that's coming through that GPS sensor right there. That's right. So, and it has to be mounted up high, right? That's why we're... we're yeah, so we, we want it to have as clear a view of the sky as, as possible. Um, so a lot of times people will run it like uh, on the front dash or uh, in my car, it's on the rear. But uh, this is, if it's doable, definitely the best place to have it is just on the roof. So there's literally nothing blocking it from its view of the sky. So we'll get the best positional accuracy that way. Now it's time to mount the showpiece, the dash itself. I've made a panel out of a flat sheet of aluminum, and Brick cuts out a hole in the back for the plugs to come through, and we have ourselves a mounting panel for the dash. This is not a, an aim thing, this is just us working with what we've got to mount the dash, but it would work. There's plenty of companies out there that do make, uh, actually like, you know, 3D printed and carbon fiber and stuff, bezels to sit the dashes in, but we're just working with what we've got. Basically, I'm cheap. Yeah, Ben's really cheap. Uh, we tried to get him to buy a nice one, and he was like, no, 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 no. Just put a sheet of metal in there, it'll be fine. <laughs> this little sheet of metal actually bolts up to the factory dash mounting holes. This way, I could keep the factory bezel and have everything look as clean as possible. And with this, that finishes the install, and AIM had everything hooked up and good to go. We got oil, yeah, oil pressure, oil temperature. I have uh, engine coolant as well on the right side. Oh, it's logging. It literally says log on the bottom. That's really cool. GPS good. Lap time in the upper right-hand corner. This is awesome. I can get used to this. Ha. I later noticed that the dash mount was a bit too reflective, and I didn't want that to catch a sun flare and blind me while driving. So I decided to take it out and paint it matte black so it would blend in better. The matte black paint will cut down on the reflection and helps make the dash look a little bit more like it belongs. Before I end this video, I want to show you some of the functionality of AIM's software and why I'm so excited to have this dash in the car. Uh, okay, so this is an example of uh, what you can do with AIM data. This is a, a track weekend that I've done with the Civic, and uh, this red line here is me, and then the blue line is a car that was a little bit faster than me. So this is my uh, vehicle speed throughout the track, and you can see 
uh, these acceleration lines here on this other car uh, was faster than mine so that I can tell that this other car has more horsepower than I do. Coming into the corner here with this red line here, my minimum speeds were not as slow as this other car, so he still accelerated faster than I did uh, coming out of every single straight, um, which is obviously an indication of horsepower. There's way more in-depth ways of pulling up data um, that I am not super familiar with. Here's the track. Here's like corner speeds around different corners on the track. So there's indicator lights on the side here. You can turn these on to be like warning lights for different things. You've got six of them on the side and then on top, you can make that your RPM, like when you get close to shifting, you can make that your shift light, or you can make that show split times on your lap. So you can make each each little dot, you know, 0.1 of a second, 0.2 of a second, whatever you want to set up in here uh, to tell you how far ahead or behind your lap are. So green can mean you're ahead and then red can mean you're behind. Super cool. Uh, and that's just the lights, not even actually the uh, digital display. So here we have all of our different gauge design layouts. We'll try this one out. Let's see how that looks. So page two, uh, so we have a blank template. Um, we've got RPM, mile per hour, there we go. Ah, look at that, that's neat. So there's our other display. So we'll have lap time in the left corner there. We've obviously got all of our icons. We didn't connect a lot of this stuff up because we don't really need to, like I don't have ABS. Um, I could connect up a low fuel light if I really wanted to. Uh, but yeah, we, I actually, I should set up like an oil pressure light. If my oil pressure gets too low, I can make it display a light on there. So as you can see, uh, the software allows you to change almost every parameter on here and you can make a display um, anything that you want, which is pretty cool. And you can kind of change the way that the dash looks. Honestly, it's all pretty relevant given that the actual function of what this dash can do is amazing. The aesthetic uh, is just a nice to have. Um, but yeah, I am gonna keep messing with this software for hours because I want to set everything up the way that I want it. And uh, I'm, just, I'm just learning more stuff as I go throughout this program. Super cool. The AIM software is so granular. I can set up the dash however I want and set it to log everything all the time. This dash will be a huge asset to me this year as I compete in Time Attack. And it'll be a big help even as a street car to help monitor engine vitals and diagnose any potential issues that I might have. I hope this video was interesting to you and maybe taught you a little bit more about how digital dashes work and why they're helpful. As always, do all the YouTube stuff, like, comment, and subscribe, and follow us on Instagram to continue watching the build of this Civic in real time. We'll see you here on YouTube next week.